right, so this is Elliot. Mariel. And Kayla. And we're here to discuss our AP Art History project of uh, Jean-Honoré Fragonard and um, just the Rococo period and his series called The Pursuit of Love. Um, so I guess we'll start talking about uh, the Rococo period itself. Um, it started in the early 18th century um, in France and it kind of broke off of the Baroque era, uh, so it could be considered basically the really late Baroque um, during the Age of Enlightenment, um, where majority of this work is uh, purely ornamental, light, and casual, and definitely irregular in design. Um, so you want to talk? About, we'll talk about Fragonard himself. Um, he was born in the provincial city of Grassy, and uh, he moved with his family to Paris in 1738. Um, and he spent some time in the studio of Francois Boucher before sex, uh, successfully competing for the Prix de Rome in 1752. I mean, he his paintings and drawings were basically like this dreamlike, almost like a utopia, and you can really see that in all of his uh, paintings. like. Uh, how the young woman and man in these uh, four paintings are almost in like this, like yeah, this surreal, dream world. Dream world I hate it's really like pretty a, though. I mean, even referencing yeah. one of his older pieces, I mean, the swing. Absolutely. I mean, that he did. I mean, that's just a. It was so just as you said, dreamlike and I mean, right. otherworldly. But um, yeah, and but so these pieces that we're covering, the Pursuit of Love series, are his masterpiece. I mean, like they're. Uh, originally six large panel paintings and they were commissioned right. by Madame du Berry, the official mistress of Louis the 15th and um, so we're only gonna talk about four of them and compare them but in total there are six right the first four are basically the main ones which um, in lineup they're the pursuit uh, the meeting the lovers being crowned and the declaration of love aka the love letters um, where all four of them basically are a narration or a narrative of these young lovers, you know, falling in love with each other. It's it's almost like a picture perfect kind of step by step of how you know they basically met each other to falling in love, got into this point of their and relationship, the state of happiness. Yeah. Right. Well, let's talk about the pursuit. The pursuit. Let's see. Yes. In the pursuit, if you. There's a young man offers a lady a rose, which is a symbol of love and courtship. And uh, you can see in the background that there's a fountain, um, and it's almost like a sign for like the female gender. Um, the flowing water um, in the fountain, it, it symbolizes the seminal fluid, and together they su suggest sexual consumption. Uh, consummation. Cons consummation, thank you. Yeah, um, which kind of predicts their uh, future. It's like, look at the woman in motion. Like, that's the young woman that he's going after. Like, he's in the left, where she's behind two other women, um, and she's she's moving in this. She's it to a contemporary viewer. Like, it's almost as if she'd be unmistakably performing a ballet, and the way like she has her arms open, it it's really it gives like an illusion of like a choreographer um, setting his his figures on a stage almost. Um, in a similar way, the sculpture in the upper right of the uh, of Cupid uh, with a dolphin fountain would be recognizable as a visual illusion to Beauchere, you know, his who helped him. Right. Um, it often, often included some sculptures in his paintings, so he definitely was influenced by Beauchere. Right. Um, like the sculpture suggests um like darkness and turbulence so. and then um you have the second painting which is the meeting and uh it depicts two lovers in like an almost unnatural radiance of stage lighting and the women's gestures derived directly from the stage like the her hand against the greenery is mirrored in countless prints of the period depicting dancers or actresses directing the audience's attention to the wings um, it was a pantomimic gesture, retaining popularity in the French theater at the time. So, I mean, he was using, I mean, dancing and, I mean, just right. natural things from that time period just throw in there to make it, I mean, so much more beautiful and so much more, like, authentic and, like, flowery, if you yeah. could say. Yeah, so, like, in this meeting, um, it's, it's somewhat, 
a planned appointment apparently, uh, which is set in this garden terrace, which uh, is off of one of uh, Fragonard's uh, uh, drawings that he did while he was in Paris or in uh, Italy. Um, and the woman's holding a piece of paper in her hand, which uh, symbolizes like the letter that was sent to her for her to meet with her lover, uh, future lover, as you say. Um, whereas um, the the colors that they're wearing, the women's in w a white dress, and and the male, he's in a red, uh, I guess, like jacket. I mean, you know, I I don't know. Yeah. Um, it, which as the white symbolizes the purity and the like man, the, the passion, red, the passion yeah. of their I mean, relationship, <laughs> <wall>. um, <laughs> but, um, which is really, really interesting though. The, the, the expression on her face and her movements indicate that their appointment is about to be interrupted by an intruder. And I'm um, just like the man kind of almost scales the wall. Like <laughs> like a knight who has stormed the castle. I mean, absolutely. He's, he's jumping up there just like a He's ready to pounce. like attack yeah, or I mean, something. Yeah, I mean he has his, his jacket you know? on the wall and he's using right? it to brace himself as he's jumping over. And also in the background, there's there's a statue which um, goes along with the other statue in the first painting. Um, but this one's of Venus where, um, you know, she she's disarming Cupid and... Um, Along with like the uh, the dramatic tension between the two lovers, there's definitely tension between them and the sculpture itself, um, because the statue is basically Venus withholding Cupid's arrows from him. Yeah, so it's like so, keeping away the lovers. Yep, absolutely. Like it's it's just the... you know it it's definitely something to look at. The lover crowned is the third painting. It depicts a scene where the artist is immortalizing the action of woman placing the wreath on her lover's head. Um, this is a gesture where it kind of implies the sexual perfection and commitment. Uh, it also, when you look at the sleeping Cupid, it also suggests that his job is done because the couple has perfected their relationship. It's, like, finished, you right. know? Mm -hmm. And then also, um... Like the artist himself is in the foreground, and uh, like that yeah, by his posture, yeah. uh, it initiates the diagonal movement of the viewer's eye first the woman's head, and then like up to the statue of the sleeping Cupid. Right. And um, it's not the actions of the god of love now that like animate the scene, but the actions of the actual painter. Right. And like notice that all the paintings in the gardens depict are like lush and overgrown. Um, but even the sculptures, um, it's the, the 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 relationship between the human figures and the sculptures um, themselves. Like the sculptures themselves kind of depict the um, the permanent love, versus, love versus the lover's right. temporality. So and there, there, it's like that tension kind of almost. Also, maybe the painting like suggests like eternal love. Yeah, yeah that's forever. true. Which definitely leads into the the fourth painting, um, the, the, declaration. the Declaration of Love, also known as uh, the Love Letters, where um, the couple is reminiscing about their courtship um, by reading their love letters, um, and these letters kind of um, allow the people, you know, to to profess their love to each other and and preserve this affair that they're having, um, so also, that they can remember it. It's also like um, the artist like put them in the middle almost as like a human sculpture. I mean the woman on the central pedestal and the man leaning onto her shoulder in like a stylized posture of devotion. Have you noticed how feminine though? The, yeah, the how male feminine. looks male. extremely she's female. Absolutely. It's, just, it's like he's leaning onto her while right. she's holding him. Yeah, which I think is well this fourth painting is really interesting because the woman is not in motion anymore compared to the first three, where she's not running around anymore. Like, she, you know, her their, their excitement and love has somewhat subdued. So, Also, the statue in this painting, right. it, this statue represents more of a friendship of, also with the dog in the front. It creates fidelity. fidelity so. and the friendship of it. Kind of concludes to the story. Yeah. All right, and that was um, Jean Honoré Fragonard. Uh, all his paintings. Alright, thank you for joining us for this beautiful conversation, and uh, see you later.